So we are here tonight at Kabbalah of the Hebrew Letters, Lesson 2. And Lesson 2 is going to have our second letter of the alphabet. If you go to your handout, we're starting tonight on page 16. So you can take a look at the handout, take a look at page 16. And that's uh, we're going to use a lot of that tonight. I'll put some of it up on the screen. But I would love if you actually had, if you can put two simultaneous screens somehow, and you can have, or you have it printed out, that would be really great. Printing out is great to make notes, or you can have it on your screen. So we're talking tonight about the bet or the vet. They are the same letter, the bet and the vet. They are pronounced b or v. Bet actually, or bait properly. It's not necessarily bet, even though that's what we say in modern Hebrew. The proper word would be bait. I would say it would be a y t would be proper way of pronouncing the letter bait. Bait actually means house. Bet yud tav. If you write out the the letter, it means house. And if you take a look at the bait, well, it looks like a house with a door open. So that kind of fits the, the letter itself. For those of you who have the letter in front of you, you can see that letter, the bait. For those of you who don't, just quickly, there's your bait and you have your door open on your bait. So you have very strong, it's the strongest of the letter. It has, of all the letters, it has the most strength because it's a nice flat bottom with a with with it's really sturdy on the ground there's no stands there's no stilts that it stands on it stands on a very nice flat bottom which um only one or uh, two other letters stand like that it's a blank screen rabbi if we don't have our sheets that was a blank screen you just oh, showed us sorry here there's your okay. bait there you go okay. there's your bait and your bait there you go. So it's a very sturdy letter with a nice flat bottom right there. I'll, I'll bring it back up at some point soon. Okay. Does a word, whether it's a bait or a uh, bait, mean the same thing? Exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. There's a little bit of a nuance when it comes to that, the bait and the bait. But generally, uh, we, we it's it's exactly the same and um, they're actually really interchangeable in every way. They are the same letter. There's 26 letters in the alphabet, and bet and vet are not two separate letters. But that, that's, that's a great question. So uh, there's a story of King Ptolemy, and he wanted a Greek translation of the Torah. So he gathered 72 elders of Israel, and he sequestered them in 72 different rooms. This is a story that's told in the Talmud, in Megillah. And he visited each of them. They had no idea what they were doing in the room until he walked in. And once he had walked in, he said, I want you to translate for me the book of Moses, your teacher. So the rabbis had no idea what they were doing there before they got there. Once they got there, he told them, so that way none of them could have talked amongst each other. And he figured this way he would see if the Torah was true, because he'd end up with 72 different translations of the Torah. He visited each of them, told them to translate, and miraculously, each sage translated the Torah identical, identical. Not only that, but because of the translation, it couldn't have been in a direct translation. So they all made the changes they had made were all the same. And the, the Jewish elders felt that if they give the, the king God's literal word, the way that it was given in Hebrew to Moses, he might be misled, or he might use it against the Jewish people. So I'll give you one example of a, of a difference between the Greek translation and the Hebrew. The beginning, the first, we spoke about this last week, the first verse in the Torah is Bereshit bara Elokim et which is in the beginning, 
God created the heaven and the earth. They all independently translated the first verse, not Bereshit bara Elohim, but as Elohim bara Bereshit. That Elohim, God created in the beginning. Which is fascinating, which means in their independent Greek translation, the Torah started with an Aleph instead of a Bet. It's also fascinating to think about it is because what they were saying to the king is you could say Bereshit bara Elohim in the beginning created God, that the beginning created God. They wanted to make sure the king knew that God comes first and then comes creation. And they all independently figured that out without knowing one another was doing the same. So that's an example of that particular moment in time. And the Talmud goes into great detail about that moment because it's quite amazing to see um, and to, to talk about faith in that context. When Yaakov, when Jacob, our father, slept in the wilderness, he was certain that he was alone. And when he awoke, he learned about Bet. He said, surely God is in this place. And I didn't even know it. And so he named that place Bet El. That the place that became the house of God, and that place actually later became the mountain where the temple stood. It actually is where the house of God stood. That was the mountain that Jacob fell asleep on and had his dream. God has many houses, the Beit HaMikdash, the holy temple, the Beit HaKneset, the house of prayer, the Beit HaMidrash, the house of study. These are all the Beit. These are all houses. Each one is a house of God. You can walk into a Beit. You can walk into a house in your home. And what's interesting is we look at this world as the Beit, that the Holy One wants us to be at home in this world, that this home, this world is our bet. So the Torah begins with a bet. Bereshit, the first letter of the Torah is a bet so that we know that the point is not to worry about the afterlife. It's not to worry about the next world. It's not to worry about what came before us or what will come after us. But while we are here in this world, aneni, I am here, I am present. And the most important thing that we can do during our time in this world is to try to be as present as we can, even though as I'm talking, because I've been speaking for more than 30 seconds, your mind is already wandering to 20 other things, and you're worried about what you're going to do later, and you're worried about what happened today, and it's impossible for you to, to, uh, to, to, to settle down, and I'm not looking at anyone specific, but I know who, how, how difficult that is, but that, because that's part of the purpose, and that's part of the challenge of our generation is being present, being in the moment. Everyone's here, but instead we're looking at all the other devices. We're looking at all the things. We're trying to multitask, which we know doesn't work. So part of God's message to us right in the beginning of the Torah is I'm going to start off the Torah with a bet so you know home, home, be present. Wherever you are, be present. You are where your thoughts are. So wherever you are, be there. That's your job. And if you think that you're here physically, but mentally you're thinking of something else, well, you're not here. And just say it. I'm not here right now. Aneni, I'm here or I'm not here. Lo Aneni, I'm not here. And it's okay. You can say that. You can say that and that is the bet that is the joy of being of this home being a home for god now i'm going to show you something else that's fascinating about the bet if somebody comes and says that the torah is not god's book you take a look at the bet and you say well i want to tell you the olive is not first it's the bet that's first why because the bet is open on one side. It's closed on three sides, and it's open on one. What does that refer to? It refers to, well, we have the 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 we have north, we have west and east, and we have south 
which is the South Pole, but the North Pole, there's nothing north. It's open. And so by being the fact that the North Pole is open, so if a person comes along and says, I am God, you say, if you are God, then you should be able to close the North Pole. And so the bet tells the story of where we are. The, 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 the bet tells the story of actually the, what the king was trying to come out. And the king was trying to prove that the Torah was not true by putting these 72 sages in different rooms. He was trying to prove it wasn't true, but they said to him exactly the opposite of what he was trying to prove. God comes first. Elohim barabarashit, that God created the beginning. And if you think that you are so great, king, well, why don't you try to come and finish the square of the bet? Well, then you can say that you're God. And it's a fascinating thought. We'll get into gematria, but actually, the if you read out bet, well, the bet is two in numbers, right? Aleph was one, bet was two. Well, the bet has another letter, which is yud. Yud is 10. And then it has tav, which is the last letter, which is 400. So it's 412. That is, that is the gematria of, um, of Bet, is 412. Well, it has the gematria of something else as well. And that is Teva. Or not Teva, but rather it has the gematria of... Bet has the gematria of... I'll remember. Give me a moment and I'll remember. <laughs> yes, please. I think, <coughs> excuse me, I just got a little lost when you were saying it's 412 because of the Yud and the, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to go a little further. I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. Okay. You're with just Gematria. throwing it out there. Okay. I, 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 was, I, I, often, I often throw <laughs> those kind of things out there so that you mm -hmm. can hear that there's actually, so each letter in the Hebrew alphabet has a numerical value. Right. And so it's not just two. It's this, and no, no, no. I mean, bet, bet is two. But we're going to get to the first 10 letters, okay. and it, which is one to 10. But the 11th letter is not 11, because all you do is take, is to make 11, all you do is take the 10 and the one, right? Yes. So let's yeah. say Yud is 10 and Aleph is one. Well, Yud Aleph is 11. So what does the 11th letter represent? It actually is Chaf and it represents 20. Right. And I, and I do remember from the Gematria class that there were several different kinds that you could choose from. So I know you're just choosing this one. This particular, which is the most, uh, the sorry. most popular form of Gematria. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Alessandra, please. And is there by chance a reason why it was 72 sages, considering it's the number of names for God? Uh, it could have been, it could have been, 72 was also a popular number. I mean, 72 is a lot of, a lot of different sages. And he was trying to make a point that the Torah is not perfect. And he, he and the sages miraculously were able to disprove that point. So I think he, he picked a, a large number on purpose. This is my take on it. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, so and I, I was actually just kind of doing the math in my head. So um, um, Teva or, or, or Taiva, Taiva is also, Taiva is the same gematria as Beit. And that this, my thought was, this is, again, this is like a little bit of a gematria, a little Devar Torah or a little learning from the Bet is that the home for God that we make here is because God has a Taiva a desire, we know what a taiva is from our other classes, a desire that's beyond belief to live in this world. And it's us, the same gematria as God's desire to live in this world is the same gematria as the home that we make for God. That was my thought. For those of you who have taken my other classes, you may appreciate that moment. Okay, Julianne. Thank you. Um, so firstly, continuing the uh, previous question, um, is, did he take the 72 
members of the Sanhedrin, or were they a different different rabbi? You can look into the story itself. I don't remember. I believe that you probably are right that it was seventy two members of the Sanhedrin, but I don't remember it uh, offhand. It's just, uh, but it's uh, the story. If you look it up, it's uh, it's in Megillah nine uh, a. So you can just look it up there, and you'll 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 you should be able to find more information about it. I'm sure oh. today the the Talmud is all online, so it shouldn't be oh. hard. It shouldn't be hard to find it. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's, it's, it's no, it's a Megillah nine a, not seventy. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, nine a. Thank you. No and, problem. Uh, and the the other thing was, is the open bet symbolic of Abraham's tent? Always being open. Yeah, um, there are there, there there are there's another letter that we're gonna find out that is some more symbolic of that, and that's the chet. But we'll uh, but it's a uh, definitely uh, it's if, if the tent was on its side as he was putting it up, then we would say that it was the open tent on its side because the bet is the chet on its side. But good thought. I like um, I like the process of thinking. It's great. Thank you. Yeah, Cheryl. Oh my God, I have four questions on two pages. Gosh. Okay, first, is Bet the same as Beth? Like a lot of, at least reform synagogues, are Beth something or other? I know we used to be- Beth, Beth, is, a, Beth is an Anglo-Saxon translation of Bet, yes. Okay, so that's the same. I've also heard <laughs> Hineni, not Aneni. So is that the same? Sorry, Hineni, that's what I said. I, I, did I say Aneni? I thought we all said Aneni. Oh, you know, sorry. I said, I, I, I meant Hineni. I meant okay. Hineni. Thank okay. you, you for. You typed Aneni too. No way. Did I type Aneni? You oh my did. Gosh. And okay. so I was like, oh, maybe I had it wrong. Okay. No, no, no. I, I, I stand corrected. Hineni. Hineni, okay. here I am. Thank you, Cheryl, for correcting You're welcome. Me. And the bat also, where it was drawn out and diagrammed that the north side was missing. I am very directionally challenged, but it looks like it would be the west side that was missing. Well, you're just looking at it from side. the wrong direction. No, seriously. I'm serious. Well, you can call the north, well, depending on where you're standing, north doesn't always, is not always up, we know that. Yeah, but the way this letter is like that. And well, we know the, 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 if, if the earth is always turning at some point, the, the, the north is going to be at that open bet, right? I don't know. That's why I asked. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the fourth question had to do with all of these sages came back with Elohim, which would be that. Yes. Can you believe that? It's an, it's 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 an amazing story. I mean, the Talmud goes into great detail. I don't want. I didn't want to really focus so much on it, but it is an amazing thing that each of them made yeah. that differentiation in the translation. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so too. Yeah. It okay. is an amazing. It's it's an amazing. Uh, serendipitous. But that's purpose was to have it be Bereshi in the beginning. And the funny thing is, is without knowing that, they all, that was kind of what he was trying to prove is that he had a God-like feel. And they all kind of, you know, stuck it at him saying, no, <laughs> God created the world. And if you want to be God, try to make uh, the sun rise from, from the opposite side tomorrow, as Abraham said to Nimrod. Celeste. Thank you. I have two questions. So I'm sensing that the letters have a holographic quality, meaning, so we did this with um, the Aleph, we're doing this with bait. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Bait uh, yes. is the- Bait okay. is correct. So, so the letter in itself can be broken down into what it, we, we can break that down into three letters. That's right. Now, can each of those, like a monad, can like each of those three letters then be broken down into? So I'm going to go into design soon. As I'm part of what I'm going to present in each of the letters, as I present them, I'm going to present their design. So let's just, I'm going to go literally in five minutes. Can I have one more quick question? Sure. So if bait is also a house and we all have, we all are, a, a, we have a, piece of divine spark within us. 
we have a divine spark of Hashem within us. Does that mean that we too are also a home for Hashem? That is uh, that is the goal of um, the goal according to Kabbalah and uh, the, based on the midrash um, is to that this world is to make it a home for God. That it's called a dira bitachtonim, bitachtonim, another bet right there. That our goal in this world is the fact that we're here is to make this world a home for God. We each have a piece to offer. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. So, um, so exactly. So, betachtonim, bet is the house that God visits. The world is a home for those who remember who, the, the, who, who built the house. And for them, it's filled with blessing. And that's the bet. The idea of the bet is that we make a home for God in this world. Uh, bet was chosen to commence the Torah to teach us that just as the bet is closed on the top, and the bottom and on the right side, and open towards the left, which is the direction of the reading of Hebrew. So, too, we concern ourselves with the day in the world that was created in onward. onward. The bed is here to teach us about being here, present, the here and now. Because it's about don't look up, don't look down, and don't look back, look forward. That's our job. i let that sink in a second. Let's take a look at the design of the bet. And for those of you who want to follow me, I'm just on page 20. A lot of what I'm talking about, you don't have to write notes on it because instead of you having to rush to write notes, I wrote all the notes in your, in your workbook. The design of the bet or the bays in Ashkenazim would say the bays or the bait, They're all the same letter. It's the second letter of the Aleph Bet. It's comprised of three lines, two horizontal and one vertical. These three lines represent the directions of east, south, and west. The horizontal line on top represents the east. Remember, we're always facing east. So for those of you who are wondering how it happens, now you know how it happens. The vertical line is the south, and the horizontal line below is the west. The design of the bet is similar to the path of the sun, which rises in the east and it sets in the west. And the midrash in the Song of Songs says that the letter bet is similar to the construction of the world. A contemporary illustration is offered by geologists that when you look at the earth, you see that there are land masses to the east, there are land masses to the west and to the south, and even beneath the ice cap of the South Pole, you find the continent of Antarctica, but beneath the frozen mass of the North Pole, there's nothing. The North is open. The immediate lesson we derive from the bet is the world was created incomplete. And the job of us, our job is to complete creation by perfecting it. We do this through our good deeds and by making the world a better place to inhabit. The North also represents evil, according to Kabbalah. We actually take, the Kabbalah takes this from a verse in Jeremiah, which says from the North, the evil be will be released upon all the inhabitants of the land. It's Jeremiah 1.14. And God's declaration is in direct response to Jeremiah's vision of a bubbling pot which, which is open on the top. It's open to the north and a vision that pretends the destruction of the first holy temple in Babylon and the nation that destroyed the first holy temple actually attacked from the north. So one point, I know I promised you so many different classes, but at one point we can talk about Jeremiah's prophecies and how that feeds its way into world history and Jewish history but there you have one little piece of Jeremiah's prophecy and you can see clearly how he says that and that is how the temple was destroyed by the evil coming from the north. And we see that in other times as well, that generally we have to be careful of the north. And again, we often look up to us because when we pray, we always face east, east towards Jerusalem. So therefore east is upward. 
And that's how you get north being the one that's open at the bet. And understanding that the north represents evil is not enough. We have an obligation to fight to overcome this evil. We also need to recognize that the open side, this northern aspect exists within the individual as well as from without. In a person, there's what we call the Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination, which tempts us to sin. The only anecdote to the evil inclination within us is to strive to perfect ourselves, and in turn contribute to the perfection of the world. One of the most important things is we try to change the world. The Torah says you change the world first by changing yourself. If you try to change yourself, ultimately you will end up changing the world because you will change those around you and they will change others and that will change the world. So this correction, or we call tikkun, or tikkun olam, which is probably a word that you've heard before that is used quite often today, this correction of oneself, and then the correction of olam, of the world, tikkun olam, is embodied in the design of the bet. So the bet represents the correction of self, which later leads to the correction of the world. The bet is drawn with two little points, one pointing above, and the other pointing behind towards the right. And this is the way when someone asks the bet, who made you, if it points above, when, they, when, the, when someone asks the bet, because that's the point of a top, right? The top right is that point of the bet. And then when it asks, what's your name? It points to the Aleph towards the back that says Aleph, one, one is his name. So who made you, it points up and then, it has that little line sticking out of the bottom towards the back, pointing to the Aleph and saying, oh, who made me? It's the Aleph made me. The one is God, the God that made me. All the other letters might fall over, but not the Bet. The Bet is very firmly on the ground. It's a base, the base, again, Bet. The base is close to the earth. It's close to the ground. You bend your knees to the ground and you be blessed. That's another bet word, bracha, or blessing, is another bet right there. That blessing comes from the bet that comes from being close to the ground. When you're writing the Torah, when, we're, when you're forming the letter, great care must be taken to shape at the length of the bet, and it should pair more round than square at the top. And then otherwise, it could be confused with the cuff. We'll talk about that later. If it's shorter than longer, then it might be confused with a nun. And if there should be some doubt in which the two letters it is, we ask a child to distinguish because a child can always see what is the truth and what is pure. It's actually, it's a funny part of, but it often happens that a letter is formed in a mezuzah or in tefillin or in a Torah. When the scribe forms the letter, it's formed, but we can't tell exactly which letter it is. So we'll ask the child, because the child has that purity and can see. So the bet has to be very clearly formed with that rounded top going down and then the back, that little piece sticking out of the back if you look at the form of the bet. Cheryl, please. Did we lose you? Yeah, no, you said we always face cease. I know we always face towards Jerusalem. Yes. If you're east of Jerusalem, I knew so someone was going to ask. This. Isn't, isn't the ark on the west side? Yes. The end of East Jerusalem? Yes, that's right. If you are in uh, if you're in the far east, then you would be facing west. Okay. Yes. But so far, I don't think anyone here has that problem. But yes, when when uh, when when I was living in Australia, we faced the ark northwest. Because, but then again, and that would be very elementary because really, no matter where you go, if you go east, you're going to end up in Jerusalem, whether you're at the west or you're at the east, because the earth is round, contrary to popular belief, maybe a couple hundred years ago. So you'll always, it's always east.
When you're writing a letter, how do you know what order to write the line or the curve or the yud? There's a very specific way to, to write the line and the curve. So you always start you always start from the top, the furthest out, the top that's furthest out. So you're always you're always forming a letter from the top, top towards the bottom. If you can go if you can go right, you start from the right. Otherwise, you'll start from the top. So if the bed is formed from the top, and then we go the top. So no, yeah, we go this. Oh, sorry, we go right. We go right, top, and then right line. Yeah, yeah it's very the 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 scribal art is very specific of how each and every letter is formed. Okay, any other questions? Rabbi? Yes. But when we write in modern Hebrew, we, we don't actually go up. Right, so, so we, modern Hebrew is writing quickly. The, That's correct. So, the, so we're talking about scribal art. Which okay, is, we have completely distorted the language. Yes, uh, in so many ways, in so many ways. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Gematria. Um, yeah, let's go to Gematria. We're on page 21. So the Gematria of Bet, we've already said this, but we'll, we'll, is two. Aleph is one. We now know uh, officially in this class, we know two of the gematrias. We know Aleph is one and Bet is two. Two represents duality. It represents plurality. Everything in creation was created in pairs. Man and woman, male and female. The, the purification informs us that we are not God. Only God can be one. But for mankind to create to reproduce, two are required. So the bet also represents that level of intellect and contrast to the aleph, which represents faith. The level of intellect is that plurality that in our world creation takes two, which means we can't create something from nothing. What's called in Kabbalah, yeshma ayin. We have to create something from something. There's another plurality there. That's the bet. So everything that we call, even though we call it the creative process, it's really not creation because we're always going to take something and create something like the scientists to finally figure out. And they say to God, we don't need you anymore. We can create uh, embryos on our own and we can make uh, create by, by ourselves. God, it's nice knowing you. Goodbye. So God says, OK, what are you going to do? So he says, well, first we started with DNA. God smiles and says, go get your own DNA. So. Everything that we know as the creative process is going to be plurality. There's going to be something from something. There's no such thing in our lives as something from nothing, at least in our creative process. The commentaries on the Torah ask, why does the Torah begin with the letter Bet instead of the Aleph? Particularly when the Zohar says that Aleph is the holiest letter because it's the first. And so the Rebbe gives the following explanation, a beautiful explanation, that when a person reads the beginning of the Torah, he wonders, why does the Torah begin with a bet? The second letter of the Aleph bet. Why doesn't the Torah begin with the first letter, Aleph? And so he says the answer unfolds like this. In Jeremiah chapter 9, there's a question that is asked. Why was the land of Israel destroyed? And God answers, because the Jewish people have forsaken my Torah. And the Talmud counters, what do you mean they didn't learn Torah? The Jewish people were constantly studying Torah. So the Talmud deduces that the reason the land was destroyed is because the Jews didn't make a blessing before they began studying Torah. What is the blessing over studying the Torah? Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us out of the nations of the world and given us his Torah. That it's not a man-made Torah, but dictated by God to Moses, Letter by letter, um, 305,806 letters in the five books of Moses. Great number to know. 305,806. That God has chosen us, that God gave us the Torah letter by letter. As such, 
true and unchanged for all generations. Blessed are you who gives the Torah. By the way, just a note that the blessing of who gives the Torah was composed in the present tense, emphasizing that the giving of the Torah occurs every day, since God gives the Torah anew to us every single day in every generation. And that a person must verbalize this introductory blessing every day before they begin studying Torah. There was a great rabbi, Rabbi Yol Stierkis, who was known as the Bach. He lived in the 16th century Poland. And he explains that the purpose of Torah study is to cleave and become one with God through the holiness of his word, causing the Shekhinah, which we know is the divine presence of God to dwell amongst us. Dira b'tachtonim that we spoke about earlier in our class. And that the two levels of our relationship with the Torah, the first is to believe with complete faith the Torah comes from God and therefore is beyond human intellect. And the second is that it's only because of God's compassion and love for his people that God allows us to understand the Torah intellectually. This is what the Bach says. So if we deny the divinity of the Torah, we cannot properly understand the godly concepts. Our intellect alone is incapable of arriving at the true meaning of the Torah's contents. So the Torah begins with a bet, which is the second letter of the Aleph bet. And this is to hint to us that when we endeavor to acquire the understanding of the Torah with our intellect, we're lacking the primary purpose of Torah, which is the Aleph. The bet is facing the Aleph and saying, remember your purpose. Your purpose of studying is to connect to God, is to connect to the Aleph. And I'll remind you, the, the, for someone just asked, the gematria of Teva and the gematria of Bet is the same. Tet, uh, uh, Taiva, let me just make sure. Okay. And so that the purpose of God's creating the world was to have a dwelling place in this world. And God had a Taiva to be in this world. And that's the idea behind, um, behind the bet. And remember, the king, King Ptolemy, could not understand that message. Since he would have said that the bet represents intellect, and then intellect must be worshipped, not God. So by beginning the Greek translation of the Torah with the Aleph that God created, the rabbis were reflecting an effect that God and not man is the primary force in the world. That the light of the above, the words of the Jerusalem Talmud become clear, but the reason the Torah begins with a bet is that it's the bet that stands for bracha, for blessing. That if one's Torah study is preceded by an aleph, the blessing with intellect and understanding. So therefore we begin by a bet. There's another reason why we begin by a bet, and that is when someone finishes the whole Torah, and they say, I'm done, I've completed it. You smile and say, you completed it. You didn't even know, you didn't even study Aleph. Questions, comments? When, when you have uh, the 305,806 as a number, and you're looking to make correspondences with Gematria, do you, would you add those together somehow or condense it? So it, I have the same thought when I know somebody just said this about the 72 sages and I immediately corresponded that to the 72 names. I'm just wondering if there's some correspondence to numbers that are larger. There is always, always correspondence to numbers that are larger, always. And if you don't think there is, it's just a matter of figuring it out. I'm curious to know what's 26 to the power of 26 and how close it is to 305806. I don't know that number. I've never done that calculation. But if somebody wants to do that calculation, I'm curious as to what is 26 to the power of 26, which would essentially be every Hebrew of the, of the, of the Hebrew alphabet, every letter of the Hebrew alphabet interchangeable. 
because that would explain for those of you who are who maybe dabbled into the bible code that would explain how the bible code can work oh. julian any uh you, you had a question there you, you, oh you. yes thank you um what i was wondering was there's this famous statement that the torah has six hundred thousand letters and that there were six six hundred mm, yes so what, what you're talking about is the Yisrael, which is what the Jewish people are called, the children of Israel. Yisrael, um, people say, is a mnemonic for Yesh Shishim Riboy Otiot La Torah, that there are 600,000 letters in the Torah, but we have computer scanning. We have scanned the five books of Moses, and we found 305, 806. So it's a beautiful thing. The reason why... Um, is that there were 600,000 souls, uh, people who stood at Sinai, and each of our souls comes from their souls, and so therefore every single one of us has a letter in the Torah. It's very poetic and it's very beautiful, but practically speaking, we've counted. Uh, but doesn't it mean it's the vowels? Because there's 300,000 yes, letters. Yes, they're, with the vowels, exactly. With the vowels and they're interchangeable, yes. Ah, uh, thank you. Yes. And uh, I'm just typing in... Uh, maybe I won't type the whole because a very long number, but it's not really readable because it's got something called E, which I don't know what that is. So E, e plus thirty six. So yeah. what, what is the actual? I'm just curious. What is the actual number though? Okay, it says six point one any, five. Any mathematicians here that can tell us what the actual number is? Oh, uh, what it means? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I used, to, I, I know what. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me let me uh, let me do the calculation. I'll tell you what it is. Oh, sorry, that wasn't supposed to be a plus sign. So yeah. yeah, is that what it is? It's six point one five. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got it. Uh, oh, you've got it in more uh, digits than I have. Yeah, my yeah. it doesn't go quite as many. That's I've what I found on the internet. Well, Maurice, what is it? So it's, yeah, 6.15, <laughs> an amazing amount of numbers after that. Okay, but... Uh, but I don't uh, find it gives you a number number, like the number, I guess, would go on forever. Yeah, but what is the actual, what is the, what is the so what is 26 to the power of 26 <laughs> is, it has to be, it has to be uh, an actual, there must be an actual number to it, no? Yeah, yeah cool. but it's probably so long, <laughs> you know, it's it says plus 36, meaning another 36 um, uh, numbers long, I guess. I uh, guess I could try and find it. Okay. Anyway, it's just uh, an interesting... Convert exponential to number. 26. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious if there's an actual way to... Oh, whether it would equate to the 600,000. So essentially, we're talking about wow. wow. There's a lot okay. of there's a lot of possibilities. That's more than the lottery. Okay. Here you go. Oh, we know. Okay, so that so that yeah. So there's there's a there's a tremendous amount of possibility. Good. That's what we now know. Okay. I do like that. It's with thirty six. With anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never did the math. Um, I, I'm actually have a friend who's a, who's a biblical scholar and a mathematician. I'm going to ask him what he thinks about that. I'm, I'm fascinated by it. Okay. 36 digits, it must be. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what it is. So I love, um, I, I think I've been talking way too long. It means that uh, it's time for you to be able to, to talk. And I'm going to put you, as we did last week, uh into into breakout rooms i love to um to see uh what you guys come up with so let's go for 10 minutes or so and then we'll we'll come back and we'll uh we'll reconvene do we have an assignment your assignment is to just kind of process all of this and see what you come up with what what are your takeaways what are your thoughts just really process this bet and what it means to you
Okay, see some smiley faces, which is great. So tell me, uh, room one, Celeste, what did you uh, what did you guys learn? <laughs> oh, team, any help? I don't even know where to start. Well, first of all, the time went really, really, really fast, and um, we talked about we were just kind of trying to boil down the idea of how the numbers were related to the letters in terms of how MJ was saying last week that it seems that the letters have a life of their own, a, a vibe, an emanation of their own. And then we were talking about how therefore possibly the numbers are the same way. Then each number has its own, a, a mm. life of its own. Mm -hmm. Anything else guys? There was a lot more we were we were saying um because you 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 drew the um uh, intuition that there's at least two definitions what you just said being one of them that the there's a you described it as a language she said there's a language of letters as numbers mm -hmm. and a, a language of letters as the meaning the words. The, the, I don't know if you put it this way, but the, the, the letters spelt out as words. So the word meaning of the letters. Um, I, I, I didn't bring up any others, but I'm, I'm sure there must be others. Um, I, but uh, And then we also talked about this 26 and what does it mean, this 26 to the 26? And it was like, that was the answer to a question and we're trying to figure out what the question was. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, um, so I, I suggested that it, it maybe it's the, the combinations of God's name, the different combinations of God's name with God's name, but I wasn't sure whether it was the number of letters in the name being 26 or the value of the name being 26 or some I was other. Just, I was wondering with the Bible code, what are the odds of that particular proposition coming up in the Torah? So 26 to 26 would be every possible letter combination of, of uh, in the Torah. So I just was thinking about the Bible called that way, which that was it. It was just a, a random thought. Sorry to, to take you on a, on a rabbit, oh. rabbit hole journey that uh, wasn't necessary. Okay. That was interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Room One. Uh, Cheryl, Bruce, you want to talk about Room Two? Yeah, really. Okay. okay. So, no, we just we just <laughs> oh. learned about everybody and where right. they were from, and you know we're gonna have a party at the end of the class. Right. Okay. We invited them to Florida. Before we, we made started. it a home. Okay. Right. Got it. Okay. We good. It the buy it is happening. The buy it is happening. Okay. Good. We made it a home. <laughs> that works for me. Ksenia, what about you? Do you want to do you want to talk about room three? Uh, we actually had a question for you. Um, and we were wondering the bet and the vet, they sound like they're different. Like one is a B, one is a V and there is another V in the alphabet. Yes. So why, why, <laughs> why is there the need for one letter to be two and for it to also be the same sound that can be found elsewhere. In order to answer that, there's so many elements of the language that I would have to that I would have to explain. Um, what I would say, if it's a very interesting question, and it's one that needs to be uh, properly unpacked, something you can research. I don't think I can I can I can give you an answer um, just like that in 30 seconds because there's a lot of elements of the language, but it, just to kind of head you in a direction bet and vet that sound in the language is an interchangeable sound so maybe in other languages it's unique and different in hebrew it's kind of like a tav and the sav where the ashkenazim say sav that ta and sa is also interchangeable sound in the hebrew language and there's others like that as well spanish also has that the the in uh the the b and the b yeah, it's also interchangeable. 
Uh, yes, there you go. So yes, it's unrecognizable for them to say either one or the other. Like I have a, an employee, her name is Viviana on paper and everybody calls her Bibiana because they cannot, they, the, the, all the Spanish speakers in my office call her Bibiana. And, and I say, no, Viviana. And they say, no, it's, there's no difference. Bibiana, Bibiana. For them, it's, it's, it's a letter that they can't even tonally hear the difference. I'm so it's in between the two. I'm, when, I'm surprised it, that this you know, question, like, yeah, came to me when you have a master of linguistics in your, in your room there. No, I'm I'm the one who brought this up. That I, oh, okay. I said <laughs> just like Spanish B and B. I often because etymologically, so many language so many language um, variants will come from Semitic languages or Hebrew, basically. Right. And so I had no, I had long ago identified the B and the V um, as one of those things. But I, I also questioned, postulated that possibly. As we had, a, we could have multiple meanings or double the double va, the double, you know, Aleph has the above and below component. The B and the V could it again have a double component? Because otherwise, the the I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. B <laughs> and the B, the base. Um, it, I mean, it seems to be so blah. Otherwise, it seems to be and nothing. Nothing about Hebrew is blah. Okay. I don't think no it is letter. at all. I mean, this whole idea. No. So I, I want to get into this. This is exactly Marie's. You you just gave me a beautiful segue into the last part of this evening's talk, and that is the meaning. What is the meaning? Well, what is the what is the the the, the real story behind this bet? So we already spoke about bet meaning bayit or bait meaning home. And so the bet represents God creating this world. The Medrash tells us that God desired a home. How does one define home? Yeah. Marie, do you have a question? So are we postulating that we should be connecting each of the letters and creating a story? From the different letters and their meaning, like God created Earth, His home. I, I mean, are we gonna go there? Yeah, we could. I, really? I don't know if we will. I don't know if we will tonight, but we very easily could. Okay, go there. Yeah. When you say the letters are are the sounds are interchangeable, very similar to, to what you said. Maurice, is that your name? Yes. Or, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Yes. But you've never heard anybody say Shabbat Shalom. You usually say Shabbat. I mean, that's not so interchangeable. Well, actually, the, 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 the vet is not a popular letter. Ah, OK. That's really, most of it is it's really the, the vet, yeah. Actually, after Shabbat, what do we say? Yeah, Shavuot, say, Shavuot, yeah, you're right. Uh, Shavuot, yeah. We don't say Shabbat at all. Yeah. Right. And then, by the way, Shavuot. if you take a look at the language, we can do a whole class just on why we say Shabbat and Shavua, which is literally Shabbat, right? Shabbat, Shavua. I mean, there's so much. We can go so oh. far into the, etymolo the, the, the etymology of each of these words and understand them based on the letters. I mean, th there, there is so much to unpack here. But I want to just go into this basic idea behind the bet, that this idea of bayit, this idea of home, how do you define your home? The way that the Torah, the way Kabbalah defines the home, is a home is a place which you return to after finishing your worldly affairs. You remove your shoes. You change to comfortable clothes. You relax. You wouldn't have to put on a show. It's the place that you could be your authentic self. It's the place where the real you comes alive. Well, guess what? God also wanted a place where God could be himself, where God could unite with his bride, the Jewish people. And that was the objective of creation. The bait of the bayit 
the first letter of the Torah is also the blueprint for creation. Within the bet is all of creation. The bet signifies creation. The root of the word bereshit is rosh, which means head. The prefix is the bet. The last two letters are the yud and the taf. And together with the bet and the yud and the taf, it spells house. You got that? Bereshit is bet. It's rosh that is surrounded by the bet, by the bet, the yud and the taf. I wrote it out for you on page 22. You can see it there clearly. Which means that in the beginning, when God created the world, God's taiva, God's desire was at the head, which is God, should dwell in the bayit. The head should dwell in the bayit, in the home. The rush, the head, should dwell in the home. And how does one make a home for God? By living the letter bet. The three lines of the bet are interpreted representing the three pillars through which the world stands. Torah, prayer, and charity. Charity includes good deeds. So when a person prays, when a person studies, and when a person gives charity daily. We lost him. Yes, Rabbi. He's a... Must have lost his uh, Wi-Fi. Rabbi, we lost you for a little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right at the, at the key 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 point. <laughs> Where did you lose me? Where did you lose me? Um, this right when you were about to say something. You were talking yeah, about you the were, This is probably the most profound thing you've ever said in class. <laughs> it means we're not ready. It means we're not ready no, to no, listen. No, 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 no. We have another chance. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Wave sheet. You were breaking that down. Wave sheet. That the bayit, the rush is surrounded by the bayit. The idea is that in the beginning, when God created the world, God's desire is the head should dwell in the bayit. The head, the rush, should dwell in the home, in the bayit. How do you make a home for God? By living the letter bet. The three lines of the bet are interpreted as, represent, as representing the three pillars through which the world stands, which is Torah, prayer, and charity, which includes good deeds. When a person prays, and when a person studies, and when a person gives charity daily, they build a home for God. The word ta'ava is the gematria of 412, tav being 400, aleph being one, vav being six, he being five. If you add up the letters of the word bet, it's bet is two, yud is 10, tav is 400, also 412. They both equal 412, this desire for God's creating the world, and by its home, they both equal 412. So we can see just in the gematria, right there, you can clearly, clearly see this idea of by it. Now, these three lines of bet, the pillars of the Torah, of prayer, of Torah, prayer, and charity, also they are able to take us back to the original three directions of its design. Since the bet has an open direction to the north, we already said that that open direction- Rabbi, I'm breaking up again. Again? Oh. Can you hear me now? Here. Hello? Mm. Yeah, we got you. You right around Gramatria, we started to lose you when okay. just in the last 20 seconds or so. Okay, fine. Yeah. So so we can see. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. Okay. So we can see in the Gematria of the word bet, we could see this idea of Taiva that God's desire to create this world is in the bet, is in the home that God created. So this idea of Torah, of prayer, and of charity also comes back to the three directions 
since the bet is open on one side, remember we said the bet is open to the north, which is evil. The structure of the letter embodies an internal tension. Its lack of physical closure poses both an invitation and a potential danger. They both point to the obligation of the Jewish people to complete God's creation, to finish God's home, to perfect the world. We do this by bringing godliness down into this world and by acting in accordance with the bet, the house. We're able to fulfill our obligations through Torah study, through prayer, through giving charity. And these are the three lines of the bet, Torah, prayer, and charity. And that is how we bring God into this world. That's how God dwells in this world. And that is how we make this world a bracha, a blessing. And we bring a dira, bitach tonim. We make this world a dwelling place for God. So the bet represents really, while the aleph was this very beautiful, beautiful, um, this, 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 you're losing me again? Okay. Well, while the, while the, the, the Aleph was representing that, that beautiful, that, 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 that point, the two Yuds and that point, the Bet is our job. Now, after we experience the Aleph, we have to start experiencing the Bet. The Bet is our job in this world. It is our job to complete, to make the world a square or a really like a rounded square, to complete that final part. We do that by connecting the three with us. We are, our body is the final line. Our body straight. That's why when we do the Amida, we stand straight with our arms on the side. We are the final line to complete creation. The other three lines are prayer, Torah, and charity. And when we do those things with our body, because it's prayer that we, it's our body that we use to pray, it is our body that we use to study, and it is our body that we use to give charity. When we use our body to do those three things, we complete the square, we complete creation, and we bring the world to the apex of its purpose. So that is what the bet represents. Please, Alexandra, please. So, charity, I understand. Prayer, I understand. Torah. <laughs> doing Torah. Doing. I mean, we can't do the Torah, but you see what I mean? Like, is it study? Is it study? respecting the mitzvot? It's study. The study of Torah. What so we're doing right now. As in Reading? What we're doing right now. It's not okay. studying all the Torah. It's the study of Torah. So study of Torah during the day. When you say charity, you mean good deeds? Good deeds, but we, but it the idea of doing it, other. even if it's a little bit, that we do it every day. So let's say if we want to give $1,000 a month, we should split it into 30 days as opposed to making one check of $1,000? It, it, it could be, or you can give the $1,000 and you can give five cents every day. But the idea is that you also do something every day. But since giving our time, helping others... That's also, also charity. Considered That's charity. charity. Yes. Okay. And prayer, prayer is prayer. Fine. Prayer, that part, we, I believe... Most of us understand. Okay, so study, prayer, and good deeds. Thank you. Okay, well, why don't we start with you, Alessandra, tonight? What's your What's your takeaway? That's my takeaway. <laughs> no, the uh, blague à part, as we say in, in French, joke apart. Um, the 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 opening. The, what you just said about the Amida being the closing, like closing the circle or the square rather of, of the bet is very interesting to me. I will look into that more and maybe I will look at integrating the Amida in one form to my daily um, 
activities. I usually, it's not my prayer on a daily basis, um, but I could probably adopt it. And, and, uh, and um, I, I love that Hebrew is so graphic in a sense to go with Torah because really that, that's exactly how you write it when you write a bet. You don't go like this. You don't go like this. You go like this. It's, mm -hmm. Maybe it's because it's a teaching that they've, teach, they've taught us forever about how you write, but it's, it's mind-numbing when you think about it. Uh, about Again, we go back to the letters being alive. So my takeaway is that little spot that is open and is always... Uh, sitting here you know waiting to catch you in a sense and and how to um you know um how do you call it the right yeah look i i, I was andrew i'll give you a little a, a little further to that teaching just because this, this is a little gift for you and the rest of the class if you don't close the other part of the bet then from the north, evil comes in. Thank you. And it's very useful to me specifically, and I'm I sure know. to other people as well. Uh, but is it the only way is the Amida or the should only I way is those, other prayer? Those three things study, charity, and prayer on a daily basis, even a little bit every day. And the Amida should be part of that prayer. The Amida is the is considered the apex of the prayer. The Shema and the Amida uh, for, for the Jewish prayer is considered the, the quintessential part of it. Okay, so I do half of it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll work on my other half. Yeah. You can, you, you, you can pass it along whenever you're ready. Maurice. I, um, my takeaway is that there's so much more, like my brain is on fire now, like, Oops, language, I'm awake. <laughs> but it's all about language now. So um, I, I find it just so remarkable that after so many years of studying, that there's still more to study. That's my takeaway. It never gets old, never gets boring, never gets tiring. <laughs> Can I say? <clears throat> That's my takeaway. Cheryl. My takeaway, well, I too want to close the square. I think that's really important. And going back to another class, get some of those good angels on that side to shake off the Yesahara on the other side. So I know what we need to do. And for those of you that weren't in our little group, we may not be available um much more just because we're going back to chicago and the time difference and when your classes are we may not be able to pop on but we will when we can and we'll love you all thank you so much for your knowledge and wisdom and all of your kindness and for sharing who you are as people so i loved it Oops. okay i was wondering if you talked about closing the bait and there are several other letters that are closed circles or squares or variety of things. Are those in any way related? I know that'll come later on, but you can just say yes or no. We'll get to that later. Yes, but not like the bet. The okay. bet is really the closing of the circle. Okay. Hmm. And I'll pass it on to MJ. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to say like Marie's, my, my head is on fire. I need to re-listen to this uh, clearly. And, uh, but one of the things that I, the nugget or the, that stuck to me throughout the class is Eneni. It's just that where you were saying, are you here? <laughs> And you kept on talking about that and say, are you here? Are you? And then you have no idea, like work and all. And what you were saying at one point is so true. 
like you want to be here but it's just there's so many things happening and and, and i find that this was um unconsciously directed to me and therefore i had to put some stuff away to just you know be here and which i i gain obviously but um i will i mean this word stayed with me that particular one so that's it She's um free. i'll pass it to i'm gonna say can me close enough you had most of the letters <laughs> <laughs> um i liked the groundedness uh bit about the bet and how it's one of the sturdiest letters and it also means house and and house is where you can be yourself and you can you know you could be grounded and find yourself i just really liked that whole interpretation part of that. Um, and I am going to pass to Jill. Thank you. Um, I, I think just the stark difference between these two letters that we have learned so far, Aleph and Bait, and how just the energy of each of them are so different. And both so important and so valuable. And I think because of the, you know, as I said earlier, you know, the whole oneness of the Aleph, which sounds so lovely and we all strive for it. And yet the bait, that's like our work here, you know, and to kind of connect them both. How do you connect with that oneness so you can be home, so you can make it a home, so you can be in the present, I guess. So I, I just love the difference and the connection between them. So then I will pass to Celeste. Thank you. The, for me, it's the layers, the endless layers and the beautiful correspondences and the language of speaking in, in visual symbols as well as sounds, as well as numbers. I, I agree with the women who said before, I, it, my, my mind is on fire in a, in a good way. We still will have to have that class so I can say which fire it is. <laughs> All I can say is it's a good one. Uh, how about Tamara? Thank you. Um, a lot of things I, from the beginning that we change ourselves, we change the world. I find that very, very encouraging and, and good to hear. And the, the strongness of the bed and um, closing the beds, of course. And there was so much there. There was so much in this class. I, it was wonderful. And I wanted to say, Cheryl and Bruce will miss you and feel better and be well. And I'll pass it to, let's see. Thank you. Sure, yes, yes, yes. I think um, only Julianne is left. Julianne, Julianne. Thank you. Um, it still feels like we've only been here five minutes. But um, that said, I've left two questions in the chat. One, why the charity is better daily, um, and one, if the closing of the bet is linked to circumcision, closing off negative spiritual channels. And I've also been inspired with a third question from what Jewel said about the, uh, the linking the Aleph and the bet because the word Av or Father means uh, has Aleph and Bet. So I'm wondering if that's a connection of a father supposed to bring heaven and earth together or something, or, or God and the, the house that is our world or reality or whatever it is. Um, so that's kind of where I am. Um, it's like gone a whirlwind. Yeah. Like I said earlier, any connection you make is correct. Yes, Av. 
Oh. But what, what Juliana is saying is the word Av is Aleph and Bet, which is father. I mean, it's one of the beautiful things about the Hebrew language is as you unpack it, it's just like an onion. There's layers and layers and layers. It just goes on and on. And then there's, and then there, there's, there's so many different elements of, of each of the letters and each thing. And as, and, 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 you know, as we, we study this, it's just, it's going to open up a whole new world of the way to study. You know, somebody once said, you know, you're a rabbi, so you must have, how many years did it take you to become a rabbi? It took me a long time to be a rabbi. I mean, he said, I, I've studied the Bible. I mean, it doesn't take that long to study the Bible. I mean, what, what are you guys studying? And to which I smile and say layers and layers and layers. And every study has layers upon layers. And that's the beauty of it. And the more you, you study, you, you open your eyes up to, there's, there's so much more. The, the letters are alive. The words are alive. It's, it's, just, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. And so, Juliana, I'm not going to necessarily answer the specifics of your question. Daily is very important. Every single day, every single day, when we wake up in the morning, it means that God wanted us to be here another day in this world. And so we, we treat every day like that. That's, how, that's the value. So when we do something, we do it daily. And you're going to say, but you prayed the same thing yesterday. Why are you doing it again? Well, because today... The world was created anew by God again. So we have to do the same prayer. It's not the same prayer because we're a different person in the world's a different place. So it's not the same prayer. And if it's the same prayer as it was yesterday, then why do you get another day? You're going to be a different person today than you were yesterday. And so it's going to be a different prayer. And you're going to be a different person than you were yesterday. So it's going to be a different charity. And you're a different person than you were yesterday. So it's a different study. Oh, it's very interesting. Thank you for explaining. Did did you have any thoughts on the bet and the, the circumcision, the closing? There is there, there is a connection, but it's very loose. So it's not oh. as it's not as direct. It's not as direct. Oh. Yes, yeah. but thank you. This has been fantastic. Cheryl, you have you have you have I something think, else? Yeah, I do. I think that the older we get and the more studies like this we do, I think it applies across the board. The more you know, the more you understand that you don't know. You know nothing. And then once you start getting into it, it's like, oh my God, I don't know any, I don't know. It's like, you think you have all these years of study under your belt and conversations. And it's like, we know nothing. It's just so there to keep us hard to, Yeah, it's hard to play catch up. No, we don't need to. We'll never know everything. We just can stay humble and we can continue learning. Right. Right. Thank you for that. Well, so I look at the doing the charity every day and not necessarily <clears throat> giving the money every day. I, I don't know if it makes any difference you know, you're, to give it at the end of the month or all throughout the day. But I think the important thing is uh, to do something good for somebody every day. And not to think that, well, I did something good yesterday. I helped some lady who was having trouble walking across the street. So I can slam the door in somebody's face the next day because I did my good deed for the month. No, I think we have to do something good daily or, or more or whatever comes up to do something good for, uh, for the world. Apparently, there's no shortage of old women that have to cross the street. Well, that's that's probably sexist. Yeah, let's what? say let's say an old an old person. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just playing with ah, you. <laughs> right. I don't know why that became the quintessential good deed to do. I, I I don't know how many times has any. Can we count how many times amongst our group this has been done? <laughs> right, but you're the one who told my son to tell a, a great story of how he hurt himself. Yes instead of doing a backflip. Exactly. He was helping an old lady. Yes, exactly. <laughs> May I play a song for everyone? Please. Can you, do you wanna share your screen?
uh, ah, maybe I could find it. Can I share the screen and play it from the iPad or? I don't know. How, how's the sound if I play it like that? Why don't you, why you can't play it? Yeah, probably good. Why don't you try it? it should, should, should I? You hear that? Yeah. Can you translate it for us? It's a bit complicated, but it's about God saying that He created that He created the world with words. It's almost a prayer to connect. Yes, and it, it ends with saying, Aneni, I, I connect every prayer. Yes. It, it's a beautiful song. I'm sorry, Rabbi, I forgot it was a woman. The connection okay. with the woman voice. This song is so, it, it gets you to your, your liver. It, it takes you. Well, thank you. Thank I you hope you all enjoy it. Thank you. I'll try to the translation so it makes sense. Absolutely. Well, I know that we're uh, a little, we're, we're already uh, well over time. So uh, anyone who has to go, you're welcome to go. So uh, we'll definitely uh, continue next week. And uh, Cheryl and Bruce, you'll hopefully you'll be able to get to recording. And uh, obviously, we hope uh, for those of you who can make it, I hope to see you on Thursday morning. Yes. And uh, to be continued. Have a good night, everybody. You too, you too. Thank you. Thank you. I, I found the translation, Rob. I may I send it to you and whoever Please. wants to Please. understand it can ask you. Absolutely. I'll send it out in, in, when, I give, when I send my recording out. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you too. Thank Have you. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good night.